Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of Exposure Runs the Podcast. I'm your host, Mustafa. We have a very exciting um, guest today, um, something a little bit different. Very excited uh, for this next guest. Um, I'm going to do a little introduction, read off a little bit of your statistics, if you will. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, first, before I do that, though, I want to thank your team, um, Eric Nemeth, um, as well as Larissa Ab- uh, Abbott. Is that her name? Ab- Abbott, yeah. Abbott and uh, Zach Yeoman, um, your team for reaching out and and um, setting this up. I really appreciate it. I know you out there on the East Coast, which is where I'm from. I'm from Philadelphia. I don't know nice. if you're a Giants or a Jets nice. fan, uh, but sorry, I'm a Giants fan. But <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but first, uh, let me introduce um, Samir Ahuja. Um, Samir is the president of Game Changer, the Game Changer app. Uh, which is a U.S. based technology company where the app and the website is used by millions. Yes, I said millions of sports leagues, teams, and parents worldwide. I myself am one of those millions of parents. I will get into that later. Um, that provides scorekeeping, stats, video streaming, and you recently added recap stories based on input statistical data, which is. I remember when that first when I first saw that last year when I was using the app, I was like, whoa, what's this? OK, I get a little write up for my because I was using it for my son. Um, he also serves as senior vice president uh, for Dick Sporting Goods, uh, an advisor to women um, in sports technology, uh, a fast company impact council member, uh, which also has named Game Changer the number one largest database of sports stats, video and highlights ever created which is that's that's pretty big and he also happens to be a two-term member of the board of trustees uh for the village of scarsdale in new york uh we'd like to welcome samira huja thank you for being on the show samira thank you mustafa i'm really excited to be here to talk basketball love what you're doing in the chicago area and uh excited for how game changer can uh, have an impact on the game Absolutely. Um, I, now, I've used the app as early as 2011, 2010, 2011, um, when I was in Philadelphia before moving to Chicago. Uh, me and my best friend, Mike, we used to run a, a, a softball league and Game Changer yes. used to be uh, primarily with baseball, correct? Yeah, it, was, it yeah, started it as a baseball and softball thing. <laughs> And more recently, we've expanded into uh, into basketball in a pretty significant way and also expanding into flag football, volleyball, uh, lacrosse, soccer, the other big sport. But our, our, our big push and drive and passion right now is basketball. Um, when did the decision to change over to basketball happen and how did it happen? Because, again, Game Changer was a huge baseball app, um, yeah. which was very – friendly uh uh how do you say uh friendly user or user friendly yeah, rather user friendly yeah yeah you know it was really driven by the parents and the coaches so many of them and particularly overlapping baseball and basketball many of them had kids the same kids who might have played baseball who played basketball let's say in the winter uh they had other kids who played those sports and we kept hearing from them there's nothing like game changer in basketball there are certain other tools and services you've probably come across them, but there was really nothing that, like you said, was as user friendly and easy to use for coaches, uh, that was free to use for coaches, that was easily accessible, that was on a mobile phone. And we got really excited about basketball, bigger sport, more teams than, than baseball and softball in the U.S. And pretty fragmented. It's played everywhere at all levels. And there aren't really great tools. Um, again, there's other things, but we you know we hope that we can one day say we have um we have the tool that everyone uses the way so many use it in baseball and uh, we're trying hard to make it as easy to use for as many people as possible it's definitely uh user friendly the app for baseball and obviously for basketball i was very pleasantly surprised to hear about the other sports that you guys have also included in your platform um what went into the decision making to include those other sports and why well, we, um, we've always focused on team sports and um, because we can, we can reach out to the community around those, the parents, the, the, the grandparents. And um, I think the most interesting thing is kind of how we progress through them. Uh, all of our work, our entire app is used on a phone. And we found that in particular basketball, volleyball with the courts, uh, flag football with kind of the size of the field it's played on, 
and um, and of course, baseball and softball were really ideally suited for using a mobile device to capture video, to capture stats. And um, we're now actually pretty excited about soccer and lacrosse played on much bigger fields. But some of the new like AI stuff we're doing, we think will make that a little bit easier. But volleyball, basketball, flag football are just perfect for using a mobile device to stream and score your game. I mean, the app was itself was created in 2010 by Ted Sullivan and Carell Savino. Are they still part of the Game Changer team in any capacity? No, they moved on several years ago. I um, am so honored and grateful that uh, I got a chance to lead the company after they left and really kind of build on their legacy. And ultimately, it's about delivering uh, moments that you as a parent, grandparent can enjoy. And we think by doing that, we're getting kids to stay in play more youth sports, uh, stay in the game. And there's so many lessons that you get from it. You become more confident, you become better team player, you build out your your physical skills. And so we want kids to keep playing. We want parents to feel connected to the game. We want them to encourage kids to stay in the game and play as long as they can. Whether they're trying to, you know, get recruited or do something on an elite level, it doesn't matter. We just want kids out there playing the game. Excuse me. I read in 2020, uh, right at the height of practically at the height of COVID, uh, the parent company, Dix, was going to furlough about 40,000 workers. And you helped stop that by trying to convince them uh, to develop and implement video streaming. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Obviously, COVID started. Everything shut down. Our parent company is a retailer. They have a lot of stores. So they had to kind of figure out what to do because governments were shutting down all the stores. On our side with Game Changer, we were kind of under pressure. Also, our uh, sports activity went to zero. Now, our, our our users and subscribers stayed with us, but we um, we had to kind of make a, a really important decision, which is, could we use this moment of just terrible things going on in the world to build for the future? And so actually, in the space of three hours on a Friday in late March 2020, we made a decision. We kind of bet the entire company on building video streaming. And uh, by doing that, we ended up having a credible case to not furlough our team. And we were able uh, to build the first version of uh, video streaming by September, by Labor Day of that year. Uh, uh, two years later, in 22 and here in 23, we uh, stream more games, youth sports games, than anyone in the entire industry. And several people had, uh, you know, a long, um, long head start. And just kudos to the team for just an incredible effort over the last few years. And I mean, we've streamed over 3 million games. That's, you know, uh, in, a, in a given year, let's say Major League Baseball, they, they play, you know, 10,000 games or something. I mean, uh, it's that's like, like the, the scale is, is just incredible. Yeah, that's that's definitely incredible. Wow. Um, I also read that a high level TV network uh, <laughs> practically tried to uh, bite your style a little bit. We won't name we around here. We don't name ops. We we acknowledge them, but we don't we don't name them. Um, but they definitely tried to steal the. I won't say steal, but let's say they tried to mimic what you guys were doing. Now, when stuff like that happens, do you guys as a team uh, sit around and kind of laugh at people trying to uh, bite your style? Or is that something that you guys use as motivation to get better? It, it, it's We do find it amusing, but yeah, we, we you view it as motivation. It's pretty clear and known to the public what we do, what our strategy is. But we have something that is very hard to replicate because it takes patience and fortitude, which is a culture that is like no other. We uh, go out of our way to spend a huge amount of time hiring the right people for our culture. The people that are great for our culture are both intelligent and really good people. I'm fond of saying that intelligence is cheap and kindness and goodness is, is dear. So... If you're a total jerk and really smart, you won't be working at Game Changer. You kind of need to have both of those things. And then we empower those people to make very significant decisions. I don't go around telling what's almost 200 people who work here now what to do. They are closest to the customer. Our team working on basketball features is talking to coaches, parents, kids who play basketball all day long. They know better than I do. So we empower them to do that work. That takes a lot of trust and uh, time because you are telling your customers that we're going to build the best product. It's just, it's, it's a lot of effort. We've seen some of our competitors emulate it, but many can't. So 
if we keep doing that, we are um, we think we'll stay ahead of ahead of everyone. And people can try and emulate us, uh, which I view as uh, imitation is a form of flattery, I guess. Right, best form of flattery, <laughs> of course. Uh, people have yeah. tried to emulate what we do. Um, yeah. Two things that stuck out in what you just said: um, one that I read between the lines, and two that you actually said. The first thing that you actually said is culture. Right. And what I read between the lines is that um, relationship building is very key to mm -hmm. the entire platform as it relates to Game Changer and what you're doing as a leader of that company. Um, because what we do, obviously, podcast, there are there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of podcasts. Um, but what we do and how we have niched our lane as it relates to the high school player. Um, we've done so because we've built relationships relationships with the parents first and foremost, and then the players as well, um, mm -hmm. which for me, which for me was very uh, uh, necessary because I started my platform for my son. Um, we were outsiders uh, from Philadelphia. I felt like yeah. uh, my son, Xavier, who's now a freshman in college, he was one of the, I felt like he was a good player and while mm -hmm. being here, he wasn't really being talked about as much. And um, mm -hmm. instead of like complaining about, you know, us East Coasters, we, we don't <laughs> we, we won't complain too much before we find yeah. our own lane. And that's you find your what lane. I did. Yeah. You also spoke about culture. Uh, what I recognize about living here in Illinois, specifically in the Chicagoland area, is that basketball is a culture. Like it's, it's, it's a religion here. I'm um, almost in a sense, uh, yeah. regardless of what yeah. your religion is or your political affiliation, basketball is, a, is in there. Um, so when you talk about culture and basketball in Chicago, uh, how do you see game changer fitting in this culture um, out yeah. here in the Midwest um, with, with basketball as it relates to the app? Well, I, I totally hear you and I get it how important it is. There are a few areas that I feel really passionate about and excited about. First of all, the foundation of our app is about giving it, giving accessibility of our app to every team, regardless of, um, you know, where, where, where they are, what, you know, what, what their background is or socioeconomic status, because the app is free. So you talk to a coach and you can tell them, Download this right now on an Android phone, on an Apple iPhone, use the app, get the content, and parents, grandparents, family members can consume it for free. Yes, there are we're business, there are parts of the experience that you'd have to pay for, but the vast majority of our customers, our parents don't pay anything, and our business works with a small right. number doing that. And when we build a feature, we build it for everyone. We don't start by saying, oh, let's build this feature and make it paid. We build it for everyone, and we give everyone a great experience, and then we build stuff on top of it. So you want to watch the game, you want to live stream the game, you can do that. Um, that's That, I think, is, is, is really, really important. We, uh, obviously, basketball there is so enmeshed from an early age. We don't just focus on elite teams, uh, teams that are, you know, with players that, and I know there's some amazing teams out there and some uh, had some great players come out. We want the kid who wants to get, play college ball and the kid who's just starting out and the kid who just wants to play for a few years because they want to make some new friends. They want to be in physical, good, good physical shape. They just want to play a sport and have a good time and, you know, and do something aside from whatever else they're doing and, uh, you know, just be part of the school or the culture of the school. That That's our product. You can use it no matter who you are and wh what level you want to play at. We hear stories from people who are just as excited. It sounds like they've been recruited to a college or drafted in the NBA where they'll say, you know, I just got better this year than last year. And I see my stats on Game Changer and my parents are so happy. And they're saying, you got to play again the following year. And that, that I think, is will allow us to kind of be part of the entire fabric of basketball culture out there and everywhere. Um, excuse me. Here in Illinois, particularly with the high school mm -hmm. basketball leagues, they utilize, and I, I'm, I'm going to assume you're familiar with, they utilize yeah. max preps uh, yes. for their high school yes. basketball needs, yeah. which I, I personally, I, I don't like. I don't like max preps. Right. Um, their, their platform is a little confusing, but, and it's a yeah. little, it's, it's a little redundant, but yeah. max prep has so much more potential, but the problem is the high schools themselves, they don't utilize the platform enough and they don't have enough staff dedicated to 
mm-hmm. using the platform. So my question is, um, how can Game Changer uh, change that? How can they make it where the schools are either shifting from Max Preps and schools who aren't even using Max Preps come mm-hmm. and use such this uh, uh, user friendly uh, uh, platform? Yeah. Uh, so, by the way, first of all, I, I uh, have a lot of respect for Max, Max perhaps on the um, baseball side. It's also heavily used. And um, we actually re- integrate some of our stats at a basic level into Max Prep. So teams can can kind of have stuff in both places. Um, OK. And. You're absolutely right. I and I've said this to the people there. They they could do a lot more. I think Max Preps yes. relies on other services like us to kind of help create the ecosystem. And, huddle. and so that's kind of, and huddle as well. So we're actually we, it's on our roadmap to actually be able to share some basic stats with Max Preps in hoops. It's not not there today. It's only there for baseball, softball. But okay. We think that's a nice sort of splitting of the ecosystem in terms of what we're really good at, what they're good at. You know what they are really okay. good at? They they reach through social media channels. They have really good reach and they put up great content. But in terms of like the aggregating of stats, and this is not a critique, it just is what it is. Like we're, we're really good at that. I love people doing what they're great at and partnering. Uh, Huddle also, incredible company, so much respect for them. And uh, they you know, their cameras and equipment is, is, is more higher end equipment. It isn't a phone. Uh, it's custom equipment. And, um, and so they've installed in gyms and all that. Now they don't really do much around scoring and stats. So we've had a lot of productive discussions with them, uh, you know, about exploring ideas for partnerships. We're, we're very, we're competitors, but we're friendly. And I think we bring different value to the table. And uh, again, we're very mobile, mobile devices, use your phone, uh, but yeah, they've done some tremendous stuff in in high school basketball and also football, of course, which was their origin. Yeah, they have. You mentioned that they're really good at particularly implementing the social media aspect, right? Uh, one of my questions, ironically, that I did ask, because again, I use Game Changer very frequently. It's on my phone. Um, since we've been doing the live streaming service for schools, I get out to the games, I stat the games. You know, I've noticed mm-hmm. some things that when this opportunity came about, I'm like, man, I can't wait to ask some of these, these, these particular questions mm-hmm. because I'm asking them from the consumer side of, yes, of things. Right. And one of them is that um, I noticed that the app and the website currently does not have an area to input the social media handles or the grade level for high schools. Uh, will this be something to consider knowing that social media and what year a player, it plays a huge part in recruitment in, in every state, yeah. uh, regardless as New York, uh, yeah. Illinois, Florida, Philadelphia. So is that something that Game Changer is looking to implement? Um, and if not, cool, uh, uh, but why? Uh, absolutely. So one of the interesting things about the evolution of Game Changer is it started as a tool for coaches, like you said, back in 2010. Then it became mm-hmm. something that parents and grandparents consume. What it's more recently become is something the kids themselves are using. Why? Because more kids have phones. They're getting phones at a, at a younger age. My kids got their phones in the sixth grade. I don't know if that's good or bad, but they got them. And <laughs> uh, and kids are doing their own stuff. They're on social media, as you said. They're the uh, the brand. Like it's not just the parents. It's really the kids. They want to share this stuff. So we have started to focus more on the the athlete themselves. And it started with building an athlete profile, which is like your LinkedIn of sports or your resume. We aggregate all career stats, all your highlight clips into one place for you as an individual. And we have a roadmap of additional things we want to implement there, including, like you said, social handles and all that. And we're working to encourage the athletes themselves to share clips. Getting the clips is super easy. Last year or this year, 100 million clips were created on Game Changer, which is just like a mind boggling number. But we want to see more. And, you know, if you're listening to this and you're an athlete, like, please share your stuff. It's your content. You played the game. Um, we are encouraging. We're trying to find ways for people to encourage doing it where we can nudge them to do it. But um, we just, yeah, we, we want to see more of that. We have no issues with that. And we really want to see more of it. We're going to share more of it. We always get permission from, from the athlete. You know, can we use your content? We're sharing more of it ourselves as well. It's a no-brainer to focus more energy there. Absolutely. Um, one other thing that I, I noticed while using the app. So when you set up games, 
uh, with home and away teams. Now, I, I also noticed that there's two different ways to do this. You can set up a game to score, uh, the you know, the team that you're controlling and the other team. Mm -hmm. And there's something called a head-to-head -head matchup that you can mm -hmm. kind of do as well. One of the things that I noticed on both of those is when you are doing the scoring, the away team that you are attempting to do the stats for and in and, and the head-to-head, -head, some of the st statistical categories aren't there for both teams. Is that something mm -hmm. that's going to be yeah. eventually added? Uh, like, for yeah. instance, uh, when I'm doing the away team, I can't do assists and something else, but I could do er pretty much everything for the home team. It's a really important topic, and the reason it's not there isn't because we don't think the other team would want that. <laughs> Right. Although maybe if you're rooting for the home team, but uh, it's because, as you know, this extremely well, it is like the fastest sport the fastest team sport. Certainly. Yes. It is really yes. hard to do it. We've spent it a is. lot of time on this. Here's the, here's the good news. And it's going to take a little time. A human being doing all of that at once is going to be really hard at the level we want. We have rolled out and are going to continue to roll out AI features that allow you to mount your phone on a tripod at the court and automatically score the game. And that's going to be for both teams. That's in its early stages. We released the first part of it. We call it auto stream. The phone I was going now, to ask you about auto stream. Yeah, I knew you were. It's sort of a, if it's, I hope you don't mind me bringing it up now as a good segue. Go ahead. You can, right now, you can, the phone will, not the actual phone itself, the camera lens will move from side to side and follow the action. That allows you to put the camera much closer to the court. You're going to see early next year, mid next year, player tracking, ball tracking, and you're eventually going to be able to score the entire game. You're going to know when there's a shot being taken from behind the three-point arc. You're going to know when it's a rebound. And is it going to be a combination for a while of AI and human? Sure. But imagine how much time you could save. You'll be able to do opponent scorekeeping fully at the same level as home. and. Um, all of next year, we're going to be releasing new features. And basketball is the fertile ground for all of this stuff because it's such a fast sport. That's where you're going to see a lot of our AI development. If I'm being fair, I, I will 100% I will agree with you. And, and uh, Bo was laughing at me. One day we was at a, a really huge game last week, uh, HF yeah. versus Lincoln Way East. And I'm scoring yeah. the game. And yeah. it is hard to keep up. It's hard. You know, it's hard. Especially yeah. now phones are getting bigger, so your hands is kind of wrapped up and trying to <laughs> tag them. So I, I, will, I will definitely give you yeah. that. I'm on your side with that one. Um, I still do try to do it. This past yeah. weekend we was at a huge event. I – uh, relegated to doing it the old school way with the with the right. stat sheet, and I was so mad at myself because I'm like I could be doing this on my phone, but yeah. nonetheless, um, tell us what what is a typical day like for you and your team at Game Changer? Yeah, uh, well, so our team is across the country, so we are distributed. We have people. We have a lot of people in New York where we're headquartered. But we have people in 30 states around the country. We have six maybe seven people in the Chicago area. Uh, I wish I'd known you. I was out there last summer visiting them. I'll be out there again. So look forward to meeting you in person. Definitely. And uh, typical day is we have a lot of engineers, a lot of product people is start the day, read customer feedback. I do that every single day. We have a lot of places you can get it. You have Facebook. We have a tool that get, brings it straight to our email and stuff. Find out what customers are doing and then collaborate with your team to figure out what to do next for them. We release a new version of our app on the app store every single week one week it's the ios apple the next week it's the android and then keep going so now it isn't like everything has changed it might be a slight change but we don't believe we believe the best way to get feedback from customers is to give them new things every couple of weeks and get their feedback so this is constant loop 52 weeks a year and um, that's the focus all the time what are customers saying how can we make it better and, um, you know, what I love about my job is I've been lucky enough to build a team of just incredible people. And as I said earlier, we empower them to do work. They make most of the decisions. Our team make most of the decisions. And I, um, you know, I set the structure and the framework in which they can just do great work. You know, you find great people, you get out of their way, right? Um, you see great coaches, right? They know when to step in. They know when to let their team run. They know when the captain of the team is the one who should speak up, not the coach. I mean, all, all of those things. It's a, it's a classic coach GM role where I'm, look, I'm finding talent and then coaching them to, um, to be the best that they can be.
There's nothing, there's nothing like using sports analogies in life where you can kind of do things like that. That's great. Now, are you involved in the coding and development of the app itself yourself or do, or do you uh, delegate those tasks to your team? To the team. I mean, we have a hundred engineers out of, uh, and we have about 30 people who help figure out what goes into the product and design it. It's about 130 people out of about 180. That's the biggest part of our team. And uh, just a world-class group of engineers uh, we have um, working every single day. And they're each uh, on a team. One might be working on baseball features. One might be working on basketball. One might be doing something for video. One might be building some other thing. Uh, they're looking at colors. They're looking at how the user experiences. And um, so, yeah, I get into the weeds on kind of what we're doing and what users want. But we let the uh, pros uh, do their job. Um, what goes into or how are your meetings ran when someone wants to make a change or changes to the app uh, as it relates to development or the structure? How is that team, how, excuse me, how is that meeting ran? Mm -hmm. Well, again, we let the, the senior leadership gets out of the way and we let the individual team that's working on it brainstorm around that. So you have someone in charge of deciding what to build, the product manager. You have a, a person in charge on that team of the engineering group and engineering manager. And with, with their whole team, you, each of our teams is usually about nine or 10 people, kind of a pod, and they will plan uh, what we'll call sprints of work for every couple of weeks. Okay. And they'll okay. say, okay, uh, here's what we're doing for the next two weeks. You're doing this, you're doing this. And if in that moment, there's some significant feedback for something new, they'll discuss it. And if it's a change that feels significant, uh, they'll run it by uh, more senior people in the company directors and our executive team. And, but by the time it gets to us, it's usually so well thought out that the answer is almost always yes, because the team has done so much thinking and so thorough in making the case for why they want to make a change. Okay. Um, why Game Changer? What about the company, its software development trajectory made you want to get involved? It, um, well, it, Really, the part of it was a personal story. So before getting involved, and you know, I got involved after it had started. Even before I'd heard of it, I uh, raised my hand when my older daughter started kindergarten to coach rec softball to just contribute to the school on the weekends. And it was the always the best day of my weeks. It was usually Saturday mornings, kindergarten we started. It was basically babysitting at the kindergarten level. I got so much value out of coaching. And ended up coaching rec basketball as well. I was, mo I was more in a, I was a head coach on the baseball side and assistant coach in basketball. And I did it for seven or 10 seasons approximately for my older daughter and about four or five. My younger one got a little, got the short end of the stick. But uh, they, uh, it was so uplifting. When I heard a game changer, I said, oh my God, this is actually a business. This is like someplace you can work. And there's no question I saw it on the ground, the passion that parents had. I saw at the same time the technology development great companies, great organizations that do technology, you have to time when the technology is usable. Like streaming companies, video streaming companies became a lot more interesting at, you know, after COVID, which of course was a bad event, but everyone was video streaming. So the timing was perfect. And then I saw the impact on kids that they were having. And to me, it was a no brainer. I'd done a little bit of work in sports before. I've been an entrepreneur as my fourth consecutive startup. So I had that you know, going for me. And this is just a unique thing. I was talking to someone this morning. I, I don't know many other organizations and companies like this. Like we, we deliver happiness to grandparents and parents. That is what we do every day. It's about as wholesome and awesome uh, uh, a job to have. I'm fond of saying my kids love this job. I joke with them once in a while. It's not it's serious. I'm like, oh, maybe I should go do something else. And they, they, they get really upset. They're like, you can't ever go do anything else. This is the coolest job in the world. I'm like, okay. All right, I'll I'll keep doing it. You know? No, that definitely sounds pretty cool. Um, again, you know, I, I definitely coached. Um, I coached my son early on, and then what happened was, I I started to realize that our personalities was, you know, we was button heads a lot, and it got to a point where his development had got to a point where it's like, oh, he's actually, he's actually pretty good. He 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 needs some, someone that's more. Uh, uh, intelligent than I am as it comes to basketball. So let me just kind of play the father role. But when mm -hmm. I did that, I became obsessed with videoing and taking his stats to make it sure. And you're right. Game changer does provide such a happiness 
uh, for the parent, the grandparent, the aunt, the uncle, and now, of course, um, the the ability to create the storyline. Like, I love that. Um, one of my parents who, um, his, his name is um, Darian, his son, Chris. So mm-hmm. Chris, unfortunately, he transferred last school year and the governing body of basketball out here, the IHSA mm-hmm. uh, 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 relegated him um, ineligible, right? Just because of the transfer. So he missed his entire junior year for mm-hmm. his, his now his senior year. He's playing extremely well. I invited him to my event um, that I had in October, which was, which was phenomenal. And he uses the game changer app and, you know, he posts that, that, that storyline, his stats, his video. It's an amazing tool. Just that. Now that's just one parent out of the millions that Mm -hmm. probably either are just using it kind of at a novice level. And, and, and the app provides so much more uh, intricate details of what they can um, do. Um, So I think that's fantastic. Um, What's next for game changer? Um, How can you, I um, mean, the team make the app even better. I know you talked about um, the auto stream uh, feature that's coming, but w- what's next? How can it be better? Well, we're certainly, as I mentioned before, going to extend our functionality into other sports. But the way that at, a, at its core it can get better are a few things. Uh, using the video capability is getting easier and easier. It's one click, but we're adding all these bells and whistles around it. Fleshing out the athlete profile where you see your entire career history of what you've done, whether you played from kindergarten to the sixth grade and that was it, or from sixth grade to 12th grade and now you're playing in college. doesn't matter what it is, that's going to be there. And there's so much data that can be included there. It's like your resume. Um, That's going to be amazing. And then like we talked about and you mentioned the AI stuff, I would like in any sport, a coach, a parent to mount the phone to a tripod. We sell a tripod or a mounting kit for a batting cage for baseball. Press a button and set it and forget it. And then all your stats, all your highlight clips come to, as a parent, grandparent, come to your phone. That's a ways away. But AI is going to get us to that point where you're not going to have to do that work while you're at the game. You can spend more time being a great coach. You can uh, uh, jump in the huddle and or a better fan. or you know, maybe you, honestly, you have something else to do and you can watch it later. Like that's also <laughs> fine. Like people have stuff to do, but the more time you can spend being with the kids as a coach, as a parent, the less time doing the administrative work, that's a win for everyone. And, um, this is going to just make it as easy. I mean, we already think we have the easiest product, but like we talked about in basketball and other sports, it's hard, it's fast game. So we want to make it, we want to make it so easy. It feels like magic. And we've had people tell us that with some of our other stuff that we've done up till now. And did you play sports growing up or did you play in high school or did you play at the college level? Yeah. So I, I, I'm sadly not good enough to play at the college level, but uh, well, so just a real quick story on that. So I was an immigrant, came here, uh, grew up, was born in India. Sports was the way that I connected to friends and the culture in the U.S. I'm, I'm admitting my age, but lived in the New York area when the Mets were really good. That that did happen at some point in the in the <laughs> 80s. And uh, and, you know, Dwight Gooden, you know, all that stuff. Uh, right, got to stay right. up late to watch the 86 series. No, you know, sorry mm-hmm. to the Red Sox. And and then also, you know, again, the Knicks were also good at a point. And, uh, uh, you know, Ewing and all that. And, you know, obviously yes. those years were. Derek and Harper. That, yeah, I'm oh, a fan. God. And then, you know, Starks going whatever, two for 18. Yes. The, I mean, oh, it's just still sticks with me. But that was how I connected to culture, how I made friends in school. And then I p- played, uh, again, just not at a super competitive level, but I played baseball and basketball in my school through middle school. And then a little bit played some tennis in high school. Kind of wish I was a better athlete, but I saw the power of sports to bring people together. In my case, I was someone who didn't have like the cultural connection. I academically, everything was fine. I'd gone to like American schools and stuff overseas, but like culturally, like this is how I made friends and how I had a good social experience. I knew every stat, you know, I was like really into all that stuff. And, um, that's, um, that's, and so to this day, I have that passion for like the power of sports and the youth side of it. I mean, pro sports is incredible. Collegiate sports as well. Youth is such a special place to be in because you're impacting kids. They're going to be tomorrow's adults, right? So we got to get them to that place. Um, one of the things I always ask guests up here, particularly that play, regardless of the level, I always ask when you played, I don't care the level, who guarded you the toughest and who gave you problems? 
Mm. Tough. Yeah. Um, that's a that that that's a tough one. I mean, actually, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a baseball thing, even though it's a basketball podcast. Okay. Because, okay. Um, just because that was the um, our there was just this one pit, like we 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 could never hit off this one. The last game I ever played, championship game in my town among like the the schools. Uh, three inning pitch limit and that they brought in like this guy who no one could ever hit. We were ahead and he shut us down at the end. And then I thought I was actually like a really good fielder. That was like my thing. I played the outfield and uh, there was a limit to how many innings you could play. So they pulled me in the last inning so someone else could play. And the winning hit was a home run over the guy's head in the position, um. in left field where I was playing. And of course, to this day, I know I would have made that catch. Right. <laughs> so, so they, you know, I was like, balling afterwards right but like that that one pitcher i remember he's actually a friend of mine because he was in our in our uh i was going to ask you do you have do yeah. you guys ever have those conversations like you know yeah, I would yeah, yeah, we, that, do. Right? we do yeah and also <laughs> like he's like a doctor today you know so it's like you know but he was a great pitcher then uh but yeah that's that's my um that's that's the extent. I wish I had a much more exciting story, but that's all I got. Oh, no, that's you. great. That's a great sadly. story. Yeah. Uh, if you're a fan of the NBA, who is your top six uh-huh. players, starter and six man, all time yeah. favorite? This is going to cause some controversy if people hear this, right? <laughs> and I, I apologize in advance to anyone who disagrees, which is going to be everyone, right? Because everyone has their own list. So, Mike, I mean, Michael, right? Magic. Of course. Uh, of course. Kobe. Of course. Uh, yeah, so Michael Magic, Kobe, Tim Duncan, and um oof. Um uh, Kareem. Okay, that's five. And Le- that's a and solid LeBron. five. And and LeBron. Okay. The thing that okay. I get into okay. vicious, vicious fights about, vicious fights is LeBron and Kobe. And by the way, both incredible and may, you know, with Kobe. I'm sorry, wait, rest it, in it peace. broke up. You if said needed, you get into vicious fights with, about what? With uh, vicious arguments about people about Kobe versus LeBron. And I I get I get that one. And um, but I mean Co- Kobe's on my starting five. May he rest in peace. I think if I needed one person to take a shot to win a game, probably Michael, but Kobe would be my second. Yeah, definitely. So mine's is um, Allen Iverson, definitely Kobe, Mm -hmm. Jordan, of course, LeBron, Mm -hmm. Hakeem Olajuwon, Mm -hmm. and then my sixth man is Jamal Crawford. Wow, love that. Uh, Love that. I was still bitter that Ewing, uh, the Knicks didn't win a championship in uh, in the Rockets, (laughs) you know, Hakeem. Like, I'm still bitter about that, but it's okay. okay. Uh, My last two, one question, one comment. Uh, My last question is... um, I, I know you talked about your daughters and your family. I'm mm-hmm. always ask my guests to just kind of talk a little bit about how important family is to them and um, what it means to be a father. Uh, what does that mean to you? I appreciate what a wonderful question. Thank you for asking that. Um, my kids mean everything to me. And, you know, one specific thing I am fond of saying, and it's true I have to make a lot of decisions at work. Uh, you also mentioned at the beginning that I'm doing community service in my town and volunteer to help the government. So we have decisions there as well as a, as a town board. And every time I have to make a tough decision, I ask in my mind, what would my kids think of me if they were sitting right here in the room, at the conference room, at the table, and I made a decision? Would I live up to their expectations in this decision. That has been an unbelievably amazing guide for me in making what maybe are some controversial decisions or opinions. And, uh, you know, kids see the world so clearly, uh, more so than adults. I truly believe that. I think we more of us need to think like kids and think with kind of their optimism and their, you know, in some ways their simplicity and clarity. And um, so I, I really love that my kids kind of inspire me in that way. And um, yeah, it's been it's been the greatest part of my life. And what is so cool to me that I get to do a job that's about making everyone's kids uh, better, because 
we got a lot of problems in the world. We all know that we've created a lot of problems everywhere and uh, we need to fix them. We, you and I and other adults are not going to fix all of these. It's going to take too long. So we need our kids to become tomorrow's leaders in whatever they do, whether they work in business or sports or politics, whatever it is, they, we need to build the next generation of leaders. A few hours a week, I'm fond of saying the parents of America lend us their kids on this digital platform as they play sports. So we feel a huge responsibility to elevate those kids, make them better physically and mentally. And uh, the whole youth sports ecosystem does that. You do that. We do that. Uh, it's a huge responsibility. And I want to see my kids do that, but I want to see everyone's kids do that. That's um, This work is so intertwined with my personal passion and for family. And so consider myself about as lucky as anyone to be able to do this job. Something that you mentioned that really kind of stuck uh stuck out which I, I try to do and um I, I try my best to um be better at it. Um I, I'm pretty good at it, but you know, I still have my moments is that you said a lot of times when you are making decisions, like you think about your children being in a room with you and what would they do. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a I'm a huge um advocate of that, number one, and um, I, I I love being a dad. Like I think it's the it's it's the greatest joy that I've ever experienced uh, my my sons. I have a 19 year old, as I mentioned in college, and I have a six year old who's who thinks he's 19. Wow! <laughs> um, and um, yeah. just just kind of like you know interacting with them and the conversations I have with them. Like I don't I don't sugarcoat a lot of things. I have real world conversations. But the most important thing mm-hmm. in my children's development, I think, in the way that my wife and I are raising them, is that they have a voice in our household. Like. It's important for us to hear their input on decision-making processes, um, letting them know also that, like, we'll hear you out. You may not get your way, but Mm -hmm. we promise to listen to how you feel about things and but you have to you have to speak up. You know what I'm saying? Like so, yeah. like with my six year old who yeah. sometimes is still in that whiny stage a little bit. It's like that's not yeah. how yeah. you communicate. That's not the proper yeah. way to communicate. Like it's okay to be sad or be upset that you're you're not getting your way, but like let's talk about that. I can remember one day my oldest boy said he doesn't like he didn't like he didn't like that he sometimes has to check in. Um, you know, when we first bought him his car, it's like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I got to check in. And, yeah, and sure. so I, you know, I, I was like, okay, I hear you yeah. and I received that. So let's talk about some yeah. other ways to do that. Well, I don't know. It's like, well, that's your first yeah. lesson in life. When you go to work or you're yeah. in a relationship and you have a complaint about something, you need to have a solution with that complaint. You can't just complain yes. and then walk yeah. off into life. Like that's just not how <laughs> life works. And so if I could give no. you some free, if yeah. I can give him some free game that I had to learn, like you don't complain yeah. and don't have a solution. Yeah. You know, the world is about yeah. solution based. People will listen to you if you have a solution to the problem. So it's like, here's the yeah. problem. Here's my solution. We can kind of talk about it, but at least I'm coming with a solution. So anyway, that's just my little rant for today. Um, I, I love that story. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, lastly, um, I asked all of our players and our coaches um, before they go, give yourself a future message. What do you want to tell Samir in the future? Oh, I love that. This is a, I'm going to borrow that question, by the way, and use it with other people. So lo- love that. Please. One. Uh, uh, be. Have no regrets in your work and your, in your family life, have no regrets. Simple and straight to the point. I like that. I like yeah. that. Um, before we go, the first thing I want to do is I want to get your hoodie size. Cause I'd like to send you one of my hoodies if that's okay. <laughs> of course. Well, only, only if you're willing to let us send you one as well. Yes. We're going to need two, one two. for both as well. All right, so what is your hoodie Done. size? I'm I'm pl- I'm pleased to report I've just slimmed down to a medium from recently okay. being a large. I, ca- yeah. I knew I knew you was going to say that. So <laughs> I'm an extra large. Bo is a medium yeah. as well. Nice. So we'll we'll get that out to you as soon Done. as possible. Now this is Same. this is this is not the one I'm gonna send you. The one I'm gonna send you looks like this, but at the bottom has the Chicago scenery. 
Love it. Skyline, the bean. I think you're going to like it. We'll get that out to you as soon as possible. When we get off, I'll uh, I'll get your email so I can get your address or send it to the office or or what have you. Um, The last thing um, before I get into my shout outs that I'd normally do is that one of the things that you mentioned, I would be a fool uh, not to at least, you know, throw the you know, the, the fishing hook in the water, if you will, you said, you, you know, you guys are great at partnering with people, uh, at, at some time in the very near future, I would love to speak to you about becoming yeah. one of our sponsors or our partners sure. at, with the shot town showcase or with the podcast. I, I think that it's a, it will be a natural marriage as it relates to the basketball, the basketball culture in Chicago, what we're doing and, and how we can help, uh, bring game changer more like you guys are mm-hmm. doing like you know we're, we're, we're the small pieces of the of the totem pole uh, but we do have the uh, I'd like to think that we have the ear of all of the top players the, the parents the coaches the yeah. culture we're doing a good job of in, including all of them because this is their platform that this platform mm-hmm. is for the kids which actually um the one question I do have like uh how how important do you think these type of platforms are for the high school athlete to give them a voice? They don't, they don't, you know, it's not clickbait. They get to speak for themselves, for their peers and for coaches to hear. Like how important do you find these type of platforms uh, to be for the high school athlete? I think they're really important. We are seeing high school athletes take more ownership of their uh, sports career of their their lives, their messaging, and there's a, there's it's so important for them to feel like they can be themselves and authentic and speak for themselves. And these yeah. platforms allow a voice globally for them. And we are really, really passionate about that. I would be thrilled to have those discussions, as you said, with you. Chicago is one of the most important capitals of high school and youth basketball, and you talked about that. The culture is incredible. What we did as a company at Game Changer in baseball and softball was because we understood and enmeshed ourselves in the culture of the sport. And every sport has its own culture and its own, uh, you know, specifics. And you're living that there. And uh, we're so excited about it. And and so very, very excited that, that we have connected. We're doing the show. And cannot wait for those conversations about how we can partner. I'm, I'm definitely excited for them. Um, I think you guys would be a, a wonderful uh, partner as it relates to the shot town showcase, mm-hmm. which has now become the official start to the basketball season out here mm-hmm. in um, Illinois. We're getting ready to do in March, our um, unsigned senior event where we invite mm-hmm. some of the top unsigned seniors we get about a hundred coaches or this year we're, we're looking for more, but mm-hmm. last year we had about 60 to 70 coaches on all levels. Now the only ones we yep. didn't have, but we did provide video is the division one coaches because it's, there's a mm-hmm. different, uh, there's a different uh, format that you have to get them involved. Things okay. that I need to do on my end, but okay. we have access to those coaches and we make sure that they got that film and those, and those um, pamphlets that we gave out that gave out uh, mm-hmm. player information at the showcase this year, we had, as I, I sent you the video yesterday, we had Angelo Saravino, who's yeah. going to Northwestern. We had uh, Chris Riddle, who's going, actually is probably default, uh, default, DePaul's first hometown recruit in quite some time. And he's a very high wow. recruit. So amazing. Um, yeah. And, and, and there's other fantastic players here that unfortunately, because of COVID, college yeah. coaches are still kind of, you know, trying to see how can a high school player, you know, help me now. It's easier to mm-hmm. just jump into the portal and get someone a little bit more experienced. But it's coming back around and the high school players are getting an opportunity. And we're just we're, we're just happy to be just a small platform um, giving them that opportunity. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to uh, to be able to talk and eventually and hopefully partner with you guys. Yeah. And you are impacting the lives of these kids and their families and the sport in a really significant way. You're so humble, but you're doing so much. And uh, I, I applaud all of your work and, Oh, uh, sorry. I need you to. Re- I need you to repeat heights. all of that. It it completely went out. I need oh, all no. of that. You need that. You need this. Uh, all right. I. You're very humble, but you are impacting the lives of so many kids, their families, the sport of basketball, the community there in Chicago. 
you are, you should be really proud of it. I'm so impressed with what you're doing. And I think you're just getting started. I think you're going to have a huge impact and I'm uh, thrilled that um, to, uh, to know you and to support your work and to help grow the game of basketball for all of us. Thank you very much. Uh, before I go, I'd like to do my shout outs real quick. Of course, I got to give a shout out to my guy, Bo, who's my producer, Bo Harris and AGM Plus. I got to give a shout out to my guy, uh, Tyree Booker, Numerex, my guy, Derek Ellison. Those two guys were the catalyst for me starting Exposure Runs. No questions asked. They provided funding and I and I just started. And of course, my partner, Ryan uh, Foran of the Shaw Town Showcase, uh, we partnered together. I got to get you, when, next time you're in Chicago, I got to take you on tour of that beautiful gym that we have the uh, uh, the uh, Shaw Town Showcase you. in. I think you love it. And actually, it might be a nice little nice little event for Game Changer to have down there yeah. to roll out the next phase of their platform. You know, we, we right. can hook that up for you now. We can make that happen for you. I love it. I love it. Let's do it. Uh, Samir, thank you very much for providing some time. I know you are very. Oh, and lastly, 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 of course, I can't forget our uh, apparel uh, sponsor, which is SVI. Um, They provide our apparel, our jerseys. They're doing a great job, Anthony and Grant Leach. I I definitely cannot forget them. So thank you for that reminder, Bo. Um, But, um, Samir, I really appreciate it. I know you're a very uh, busy gentleman out there in New York. Um, You know, New York is a fast-paced town, regardless of living (laughs) in the outskirts or not. So we really appreciate you guys reaching out. Um, I'm very happy to have provided an opportunity, but I'm more than happy that I was able to receive the opportunity to speak to you. Like, it's not every day. Um, that I get a chance to speak to to a president of a of a of a company, a vice president of a company um, that has such an impact on the sports world. Um, I know you try to be humble, but you guys are you know, you're doing you're doing exactly what you charge me that I'm doing. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank thank you so much. Thank you as well. This was uh, just so much fun to do, and uh, looking forward to when we speak again. I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to it.